Hi, and welcome back to Your Autism Game Plan. I'm Joya Vanderlaan, a family nurse practitioner, a functional medicine specialist, and an autism mom. Last week, we talked about uh, gluteomorphins, and this week, we're going to be talking about caseomorphins. Now, gluteomorphins come from gluten. Caseomorphins come from casein, which is the predominant protein in dairy products. So we can think about it like this. Gluteomorphins are to gluten as caseomorphins are to dairy. If you haven't had a chance to watch the video on gluteomorphins, I would encourage you to do that. I give a little bit more background information and kind of a foundation to understanding not only gluteomorphins, but also these caseomorphins. So caseomorphins are the byproducts of, of the metabolism or digestion of casein, which again is the predominant protein in dairy products. So things like milk, ice cream, yogurt, cheese, but also there are many hidden sources of dairy, of casein in products that are not obviously dairy products. Casomorphins are as bad or worse, depending on the person, as gluteomorphins are. They can cause things like euphoria, which makes us want them more, and also then addiction and withdrawal symptoms. I cover a lot more information on that in the gluteomorphins video. So again, head back to that gluteomorphin video either now or when you're done watching this video. One of the big practical applications that I want you to remember is these casomorphins and gluteomorphins are going to cause a withdrawal when we remove them from our children's diets. And what that withdrawal can look like varies, of course, we're all individuals, but a lot of times I see parents pull the gluten and dairy away and they say, you know, my child's behavior is so much worse. I don't know what's going on. I think they really need that dairy or that gluten. But if we really understand the why behind what's going on and understand that those are withdrawal symptoms, it's easier to stick with that removal of gluten and dairy because we understand that it's better long term for them. They're just having these symptoms of withdrawal from the casomorphin or gluteomorphin. This is another thing I hear from patients. But my child doesn't react to dairy. Um, I've been feeding them dairy and I really don't think it bothers them. My first question back to them then is usually, oh, okay, have you ever tried to eliminate dairy for six weeks? And many times the answer is no. Uh, because they, they haven't thought that there's been a reason to eliminate dairy from the child's diet. What we need to understand is that an IgG food reaction can take up to 72 hours to manifest. And so even if you're only giving your child dairy every other day, for instance, you're not necessarily going to notice a reduction in symptoms such that when you give your child dairy, it leads to an increase in symptoms. Again, it can take a few days, even a few weeks in some cases, for these dairy or gluten proteins to get out of the system and for our child then to reach a baseline of health, of behavior off of gluten or dairy. That's why it's really important if you're gonna do gluten-free, dairy-free, like I really do strongly recommend, make it strictly for six weeks. Give it a try, six weeks. As I mentioned in the gluteomorphin video, if we understand that our children are so addicted to the brain's exposure to these gluteomorphins or caseomorphins, it can be a lot easier to endure those withdrawals from them when we're, t when we're taking away those foods. Again, I kind of liken it to a drug addict, right? These drugs, these caseomorphins, gluteomorphins are literally binding to opioid receptors in the brain, causing um, euphoria, addiction, and withdrawals when we take them away. Again, I would liken it to a drug addict. You would not say, well, let me give you that drug because it seems like you're have a, having a hard time, you know, coming off of this drug that we know is bad for you. So because you're having these temporary symptoms, we're just going to give you back that drug. Well, that may resolve symptoms in the short term, but it doesn't help them long term, right? Sometimes we do need to endure a little bit of suffering, of worsening of symptoms and behaviors for the long term good. Um, and again, 
these casomorphins like the gluteomorphins can cause inflammation, inflammation of the gut, which leads to leaky gut, malabsorption, um, dysbiosis and imbalance of the good bacteria and sometimes overgrowth of bad bacteria or yeast. And when that happens, it just one thing leads to another and pretty soon, you know, we've got to really hit some interventions hard to kind of get our kids back on track. Again, my typical recommendation is to try six weeks at least strictly gluten-free and dairy-free um, and see how your child's symptoms or behaviors may improve. Again, I want to emphasize, I want to help you understand the why so you can stay curious, so you can help your child. That's what I'm here for, is to help you help your child do the best for your child. Remember, be gentle with yourself. You're doing a great job.